Hello, strangers. Hello, intimidating flesh wall. <laughs> uh, so I didn't have anything planned. I, I'm a professor, and I'm here with some students. And I was dared to share a story, ironically, by one of the students, Johannes, and his tenderness intimidates me. So I'm here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to fit in. I'm not, very, I'm not very funny. This isn't a very funny story, but I'm going to share something that's intense and intimate. Uh, a few years ago, I had a spiritual crisis, and I didn't understand reality. I didn't understand what it, what it meant to be trapped in flesh. I imagine some of you have had that same dilemma. What am I doing here? Why? How and why and whatnot? Uh, so I sought the counsel of a preacher man, and I didn't understand his language, so I sought the counsel of a doctor, and he wanted to make me more normal so I could integrate into society, and that sounded very boring because I'm a writer, so I rejected that. Uh, and then inevitably, I, I ended up going to see a shaman. And I don't know if any of you have ever met a shaman. They're mystics. They're silent. They pursue the divine realm. Uh, so a friend of mine suggested I go in and talk to a shaman. So I sit down on their floor, and she's staring at me. She's a very powerful woman. She has a very powerful stare. And she starts asking me my story. I start telling her in a, you know, the, the, the story of my life that I memorized so far. And she stops me, and she, she dares me to be silent. And she dares me to consider that I might have lived other lives as you might have lived other lives. And I've approached that idea theoretically, but in reality, how could you understand? We, we have no memory of these things, right? If you were alive a thousand years ago, you don't remember. Maybe that's what the gray matter is in the brain, but you don't recall these things. So I, I, I took her challenge, and I dared myself to be still. And we were silent for a long time, and I started to have these weird visions. She was drumming, and I don't know if I created them, but I saw myself, in all of these different forms. And I saw that I was a, uh, I was a counsel to a king and, a, and sages, and I brought poor people the promise of life with my own birth. And I was a woman, a chambermaid who couldn't read and just smiled all day. And in the 18th century, I saw myself as a boxer throwing haymakers. And all the, the crowds were cheering for the, the blood on the floor, and they loved me for turning sentient flesh into meat, like an alchemist. And they carried me to the shade when my legs failed me. And I saw all these things, and I thought I created them just for myself. I didn't think that they actually happened. I thought I was just being a writer. And I just created them. So I asked this question, as the shaman dared me to go further. And I said, why do I write? Why am I obsessed with language? Why am I obsessed with putting things down on paper and trying to tell the world a secret in my own mind? And she dared me to go farther and farther into my own mind. And I saw that I was a writer before. And I was a romantic. I was scribbling sentiment that's got no business being tethered to the, the head of a poor schmuck like me. And I saw that I was a shaman keeping a notebook and commanding the devils within me to speak once and name themselves and disappear forever. And I was a satirist making fun of the world. And that made me very sad. And then I saw myself now as like a child and I started to weep at the thought of Mother Muse turning away from me to raise the sun and the moon. And I remember in my own mind begging her to look, look at me and keep me in the back of her mind. Uh, and I know I don't have any jokes or punchlines. You should see me in real life. I'm very funny and clever. <laughs> but it's interesting that I'm the last person to speak tonight. So I'll end by daring all of you to turn off your worlds and turn off the layers that you've created that are your personalities and try to see who you are and what you want, where you're going. And I dare you to be silent and see what you find. Thank you. Thank you.